Uh, so today I will be presenting something about what will be the next steps and what is the digital design. I think in general we are living our lives more and more in the cloud. I think uh, right now I'm speaking to you guys, but I think this will be maybe presented in YouTube and maybe many more people will see this. And maybe every day we're doing some interactions, like today we're doing quite a lot of human personal interactions, but I think uh, more often we are more, more in, the, in, in the internet, in the social media, and I think also our designs are evolving in this direction. So this will be the presentation. I will be a quick introduction into the problem. I think I will be then speaking a little bit about the digital design. That's what we do as a consultant. A very little about digital fabrication. I think we cannot influence this, and that's maybe open question to all you guys, contractors and processors, what you do in this, uh, in this area. And then a little of next steps of what we think, where we can go. So if I will give you a task that will put you somewhere in the middle of the Finnish forest and tell you, well, okay, you need to do something, uh, to survive, you probably very quickly will, will decide to, to go with very organic form. Right? And very quickly put something together to, to be warm and uh, to be out of the water. If I give you some tools, uh, then you probably will start to end time, and maybe some food, and maybe some shelter, temporary shelter, and then you will probably start to think about some geometry and symmetry, and maybe some architecture, and, and so on. And that will be probably evolving somehow into the current state of the affairs, where we're building uh, glass, concrete, steel, sky, skyscrapers, and, and very interesting buildings. But I think, in principle, what I want to make a point here is that nature is organic. Right? We are, our DNA is organic. We, we, the, the, how we develop as a humans is not very symmetric. It's uh, quite, quite interesting and, and quite free form. So why we ended up doing what we're doing? Why we ended up with orthogonal grids? Uh, why, why we designing everything in, in, in a straight line? Sometimes in a curve, simple curve. Well, I, I took this picture from Eva Ježična, um, I think famous class staircase architect, uh, as she is describing the design. Design is a complex, very complicated form where you start somewhere, then you start to look around and go with different, different designs, different objectives, and eventually one day maybe you hit the target or not. <laughs> well, hopefully we, we all hitting the target. But I think, you know, the architects these days, they're not kind of in, in a one direction only, right? That's what I kind of try to, to, to explain. So a couple of years ago, my first project in Arup, uh, you came to Foster's and there is a lot of, lot of to take, a lot of different options, a lot of different ideas. Uh, and you need to very quickly as an engineer to go and pick one and say, this is the best one. How you can do that? I think it's very difficult. You either have an experience or you just maybe this one. Uh, and obviously, as well as, you know, sometimes, like a couple of years ago or a couple of decades ago, the architects needed to build the physical model and experiment with it. Right now, it's instant. They just 3D print, 1,000 options, 10, 15 different, you know, small details of the project, and they're looking at it and, and kind of very quickly evaluating what they can do. So, we need to somehow adapt to this. Right, this is a project in uh, um, Amsterdam when our folks in Amsterdam office did a little bit of the played architect, where they are engineers, but they've been paid for, for, by architects to do that, so that's okay. So they really look at this parametrical optimization of different aspects, looking what the what the massing of the buildings might be, looking looking into uh, solar studies, uh, what the facade is doing, and so on. So I think this is the the direction. This is where what life what we're living in and how quickly we need to adapt into it. So I think at similar conference, or uh, class tech or whatever was it, um, no, class tech, that's challenging glass. I think we've been speaking to FIDRA about that we have this kind of idea, would we developed in TU Delft, would you like to be involved? My colleague, Dimitris, was a master student where he looked into this. So we kind of come together and say, okay, let, why not, let's do it. But then we think about, so how, what, what value, what added value we can bring as a company, as individuals into the project, right? The idea is there, we didn't work too much on it, 
but I think we bring something about this digital aspect into it. So we look into all these parametric studies, uh, Grasshopper scripts, doing strand and GSA analysis and looping these together. Our primary objective was to minimize those, what are the shock tubes which are connecting those two plates together. So we came up with some kind of ideas, with the scripts came up with some, some patterns, and we look into this, how best to place all those, all those tubes, how to minimize the amount of how much, uh, how much uh, tubes they need to bond together to make it happen. Obviously, we did a little bit of uh, analysis, you know, verifying all these Caramba scripts and so on to make sure that uh, it somehow works. Then Rob Nisa and, and, uh, and Fred did a couple of the testing, confirmed that the simple elements work. We, we, we found uh, that well, we tweaked a little bit our models to, to, make, to adapt to the reality. And folks, students, cheap labor, um, bonded a couple of tubes together uh, and then tested it properly so we, we, we are safe. And uh, probably the results, you, you, if you've been in the glass tag, you, you, saw, it. you, you saw it. So I think in short, um, in terms of digital design, in glass, we are well, well, well adapted. We know what we're doing. We're doing all the scripts, uh, algorithms. Um, sometimes one of our colleagues, James uh, Griffith, the last GPD presented uh, how we can adapt the, into well, how we can make artifi artificial intelligence to help us designing some of the glass. All these beam models, digital twins, uh, visualization of the big data. All is there. I think we kind of within the what what is possible, and uh, I think there is always room for improvement. But I think we are in in, in a good shape. So I think in Europe, I had this opportunity to not work only with the glass, but also working with other materials, and that's very influencing because you are looking in into what other people do, what other industries are up to. And I think this is again on Bridge in Amsterdam, where our Amsterdam office uh, helped a little bit. And obviously, they did exactly the same. In, in, a, in a design, from a design perspective, they used the same tools, same techniques, well, what, what we can use in glass. But the next step was that they used the robots and, and digital fabrication to, to manufacture this shape, because obviously, it was very difficult. Another uh, good example is maybe some the, the work what the, what the folks done in Amsterdam on the on the joint. Uh, I think good work on, in Bartlett architecture uh, is about the forming of the thin sheets and uh, how they are approaching the problem of using the robots, using the, the using the material at the best. I think there is a little study where they're looking into again. Uh, digital design, how the digital design can inform the, the, the shape of the panel. Uh, one of the projects that I was involved with is a uh, Croatian pavilion in Benale, Biennale, that is, where architects came, wanted to create something, some pavilion, very interesting one, um, and it's full fluid, full complex, very difficult to manufacture in a, in, in a normal, classic way. So, obviously, robots can help. And uh, we delivered uh, this uh, pavilion, which we stand uh, 45 degrees, which is very interesting and uh, challenging for a plastic. Um, but I think it's, it's what it is, right? We, it's, it's the life what we are in. And um, as well, uh, Hook Park in our, uh, Ar Ar architectural associations. They're looking into timber. Well, there is a lot of robotic manufacturing in the timber, and they created this uh, unique pavilion, which is sourcing a timber uh, trunks of of of, uh, of uh, the trees, um, 3D 3D cutting them and, and assembling them in a, in a nice shape. In ETH Zurich, they did these uh, precast concrete slabs, which are full organic, fully fully parametrically optimized. So I think in interesting stuff. I think this is. A pavilion, what uh, our, our, our colleagues in the uh, London office, and with a little of my help, work together in, uh, in New York. Again, dynamic, something what is moving, something what is, uh, what is changing. So this is what, what others do. So what we do in, in the glass industry, and how we approaching the digital fabrication in glass. 
So I think there is this, uh, this view that uh, robots are very good if you're doing something that is repetitive and uh, if something what, uh, uh, what, what needs to have a lot of, a lot of manufacturing. Uh, this is the picture from 96 and this is from Toyota. However, I think we kind of move from, from that repetitive one-line uh, manufacturing into many modern, other aspects where robots can help and change and, um, and, and help us to, to design and manufacture something. Well, this is very interesting because glass, from the old times, uh, it's very multiple material, right? It, it doesn't need much, uh, much, and much uh, energy, a little bit of heat, and you can, and you can mold it in the, in the way you want. Obviously, our projects are interesting. Uh, they are not, uh, as, as I said before, they are, they are three-dimensional, they are curved, and um, I think they are challenging in, in general. I think, and somehow, we can still manufacture them, right? So I think it's, it's good. We, our contractors, our specialized contractors, are on the case, and they can deliver. So very quickly, what we can do in terms of man, uh, manufacturing of, of with, with glass. So I think, obviously, there is this work in MIT where they're printing glass, trying to, to do something with it, trying to somehow upscale it into the, into the bigger components and elements. I think in terms of fabrication of the glass and processing of the glass, I think all of the lines are fully uh, optimized, fully uh, automatized, right? There is not much work, I think, in the industry in terms of, of, of this is, is on top of it. I think what we kind of missing and maybe what will be quite a good next step is um, using, the, um, us using maybe more of the help of the robots in the assembly and in installation of, the, of, of our projects. I think, again, that's an open question to you guys. I think maybe there will be a good discussion after the presentation, what, what we can do. So again, I think very quick, uh, next steps and maybe conclusions of, of what, I will be, what I was speaking today about. So as I said, right, we are made as an organic material. Uh, we are not rec rectangular, we are not uh, simple. We are difficult, and uh, we, we, we should probably, you know, we, sh we, we have now the tools, even in design, but as well as in fabrication, to address that problem and start to think about where we can optimize the materials to their best. I think right now this is uh, one of the kind of projects what we've been starting to look at is using the topological optimization tools to find out what is the optimal uh, material, where we can place that material in that glass floor, what you will probably see some pictures and videos uh, on the Rob uh, screen. So I think we, we have the toolkit to, to use it. Uh, right now, I think what we need to upscale is perhaps uh, those couple of the, of the students, which greatly had a lot of fun in doing it, into a couple of the robots, which will deliver a precise element, which uh, will avoid any of the issues with the tolerances and with, uh, with all the challenges what they had during the manufacturing of those elements, uh, to, great, to, to create some new great structures. So thank you very much. That was brilliant, Peter. Thank you. 10, 20, 30, the best presentation. 10 slides, <laughs> 20 minutes, the font, 30 points. <laughs> that was, you know, I hope it was never going to finish. That was brilliant. Any question for Peter? Come on. They're free. We don't charge you for that. James is going to ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and, and I don't know if you have a lot of experience with this, but you showed that the uh, MIT was printing glass. And I know that when you try to uh, print something 3D, it can be very compositionally uh, sensitive. Very difficult, yes. And, and so is there a limitation, like you have to have a specific composition that will only work with 3D printing? And is there a limitation to some design based on that? Or is it more wide open than you would anticipate? I think, well, so I, obviously I'm not the expert in it. But what I, what I learned or, or heard perhaps is that obviously as you print it, um, the, the glass is, is bonding to each other, but that bond is, 
is perhaps full of flaws. <laughs> and the material is, as you said, not very uniform or, or uh, got some challenges how you will anneal this, uh, this glass. So obviously there is a lot of, a lot of uh, technical challenges to overcome in terms of 3D printing of the glass. But I think what, perhaps what we, what we can see is that, not necessarily in the glass, but I think in, in, in the glass industry we're using different materials. We're trying to push from, from uh, bolted connections, from mechanical connections to adhesive, to glues. So I think maybe where we can see uh, application of ro robots and, uh, and digital fabrication is in uh, applica application of the adhesives. Uh, thank you for, for presentation. Uh, you mentioned that uh, you're looking forward to uh, replace students with robots. Uh, I don't think it's far away. You know, we're gonna make it one day. What about uh, replacing engineers with uh, robots? That's that's happened? already happened, right? Obviously, a long time long time ago, we needed to do a lot of checks, a lot of calculations, and uh, everything was done in well. We also, I remember that time times not so long ago when uh, when I needed to open a book and uh, and go to UB sections and find out. You know, and that's already a optimization where. Uh, where someone did a lot of calculations to help us engineers to not go through the long equations of, or formulas to, for uh, lateral torsional buckling, but you just go, sir, you'll be section of 500, that's it, right? That, that's what it, what it can take. But I think it's there, right? I think we needed to check all the climatic loads, all the terminal stresses, everything. Right now we have a spreadsheet, right? So I think our time is much more smaller, and hopefully we can, we can use that time to think rather than to doing some, uh, some uh, boring math. Th thanks, Peter. Um, this off. Um, I saw at the end you did some uh, interesting stuff with the topological uh, structural optimization. Um, we, we've been playing with that a little bit in our office too, and um, the, the interesting dilemma for us is whether to use off-the-shelf software like ANSYS um, or whether to write custom uh, scripts, because the, in architecture, as opposed to mechanical engineering, there's a lot of um, unique adaptability. <laughs> right, it's it's a crazier world out there. Um, how do you how do you find? Have, have you done much work in that space, and so, do you use custom things or? Yeah, so I think a long time ago, like again when I studied, uh, the IB used ANSYS and, and topological top, top op uh, in, in ANSYS. Uh, this one actually is developed in in Europe. So, uh, so for Mark Mark uh, Arkinstall spent some uh, some quality time uh, writing some codes and, and and doing his own because obviously he said that mine is best. I know what I'm doing and I exactly that that we will do what I want to do. So I think so it's the is important. yeah, it's it's you know it's whoever you ask. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Peter. Hi there. Did you like what you just saw? If you did. Why not like the video? Drop us a comment below as well as share the video with others since GPD is all about sharing. And to receive more videos in future, subscribe and don't forget to click the bell icon for notifications. Ciao!